welcome to the Velveteen Lounge Kitchen, where we are celebrating today the music of Shonda and the Howlers. And first things first, I want to get this straight. If we are pronouncing your name wrong, please let us know. We've been saying Shonda, which made sense to us, but if it's Shanda, please somebody let us know soon. But anyway, here we are. It's Sunday evening. How did that happen? This weekend <laughs> flies by. Flew by. As, as always. Do they all lately? But anyway, um, we are so excited today because we are enjoying the music of Shonda and the Howlers' debut Hello. CD called Trouble. Trouble. And trouble it is. A fabulous band out of Las Vegas. And um, as you'll hear in the music throughout the evening, I've variously seen it called a soul revivalist band and an R&B revivalist band, but they do everything. Rockabilly, Both, soul, R&B. Very, very versatile. As you can enjoying hear, this, this is a real blue shower kind of a tune. So again, here is the album, and we will be playing it as we mix drinks. And if you find yourself interested in purchasing this album, which I highly suggest you do, you would go to rumbarrecords.bandcamp.com. So we'll be saying that again, but rumbarrecords.bandcamp.com. So, you know, I think we can tilt the phone down a little bit more still. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Okay. I'm just going to have Paul tilt this down a little bit, and then he'll start looking at comments. But, yay. There we go, you can see the bar now. Very nice. Which is great because I'm ready to mix a drink. Well, so one of my favorite tracks on this album have? is called She Don't Want a Man. And um, I thought that was a great idea for a drink. So anyway, I am making something called She Don't Want a Man. And I'm starting with two ounces of bourbon. And next I'm adding a half ounce of apricot brandy and a half ounce of fresh lime juice and then I'm going to add a stopper of Boy Drinks World Serrano Cocktail Spice uh, yes. and I'm very excited to report that very soon we will have these for sale in our online store so um, they're not there quite yet but look for them soon and Having a stopper that. Hello, Ellen. Hello, Hello to Patrick. Hello, to Reese. Hello, thank you for joining us. We're very excited about this one. We love this album, so, and we got permission to use the music. So. Let us know if like this is too loud or too soft. I can turn it up, turn it down. I know it, it's okay. it seemed a little loud before, but anyway, I'm gonna shake this up. You always start a little louder on your turn. So anyway, I started with two ounces of bourbon a half ounce of apricot brandy, a half ounce of fresh lime juice, a stopper of Boy Drinks World Serrano Cocktail Spice, and I'm going to strain that into my cocktail glass. This is the song that I named the drink after. As she a don't want a man. Fact. So anyway. Pretty um, good timing. And then I'm going to add a splash of chilled lager. In this case, Narragansett, which you can't tell because it's in a Shonda and the Howlers beer koozie, so... Patrick says he would pronounce it Shanda because he knew a drag queen named Shanda. Oh, okay, yeah. Who knows? You know, of course we thought of this three minutes before we went live. Like, we've been calling it Shonda all along. Like, I hope it's not Shanda. Gee, what anyway. is it? Buy the album. <laughs> Just buy the album. We don't care how you pronounce it. <laughs> we don't it. care how you pronounce it. It's a great album. But, you know, if you're listening to it, if you like it, so anyway, I think you'll dig the whole thing. It's pretty vigorous the whole way through. I'm not trying this for the first time. I did prototype it this afternoon. And I still love it. It's a good thing. Do you still love it? I don't know. Let's see if I still love it. <laughs> Yeah, that's a great thing. So anyway, this one, it will be listed below when I go list this episode later. Two ounces of bourbon, half ounce of apricot brandy, half ounce of fresh lime juice, a stopper of Boy Drinks World Serrano Cocktail Spice, which will be for sale in our online store soon. And I shook that up, strained it into my glass, and then I added a splash of chilled lager. Any lager you like would be fine in this situation. Pretty much. Ah, and of course, drinks always taste better in a Velveteen Lounge kitchen glass. Also available at the online store. <laughs> Just saying. So, 
<laughs> so good. Anyway, so what do you have for us, Paul? Okay, so oh, we're just reading a couple of comments here. Oh, okay. How's everyone's Sunday? Uh, we're doing great. Thanks, yeah. uh, thanks, Ellen. And uh, Patrick says, been a rough Sunday. Glad to be hanging out with y'all. Glad that oh, you're I'm here. Sorry, it was a rough day. But... Oh yeah, you know, you know, I've had them, had them recently. Things happen. Can be a drag. Well, we can help that sort of process out now. The lovely lady to my right here actually decided to do a straight up drink that to my mind tastes like a whiskey sour variation. It's not really, there's a lot more going on. There's a lot going on here. It's, it's on. hot and spicy. Yeah. It's um, It's got the apricot, which I'm definitely getting. And, yeah. and it's got the beer, so. so, is it, and so the it's, it's, it's a really interesting combo yeah. there. You drink this and you're like, oh, I'm definitely getting the bourbon. And then it's like, oh, there's some heat. <laughs> and then there's this other layer that, that's a really nice thing. I'm kind like of proud of it. So. So we are going to go with a different kind of a thing. I decided to go for, start with anyway, a hurricane and say, what can I do with that? Now, a hurricane is a very simple drink and it's big and people drink them and get a little loaded. I, I liked the name and I was thinking Sean and the Howlers and I thought, you know, how about something that howls? So I decided to come up with something I call the Howlin' Wind. Oh. So we actually have one after, which one is which here? Let's see. Oh, this is. <laughs> Hope I can remember. I put it on the bar, right? So this is one ounce of amber rum. And one ounce of Reposado tequila. Uh, please, if you can feel those. That's all we can do. Oh, wait. Okay, here we go. Now, if you don't have Reposado tequila, use whatever tequila you have. A nice amber tequila is good. If you don't have that, Oh, Doug's use here. Hi, Doug. Hey, Doug. Brought me like a New England hurricane. <laughs> oh, we're about to do that, I think. <laughs> Half ounce of passion fruit syrup. You can get some good passion fruit syrups in the market again. We make our own. It's pretty simple. If you want to know how, let us know. We'll let you know how. Oh, it's very easy. Yeah, not much to it. Half ounce of lime juice. And this by itself is actually oh, wow. a really good cocktail. You do that straight up, you'd be like, oh, I'm done. But I decided to. Shake in uh, my loft shaker, also available at the Belting Lounge store. <laughs> plug, plug, plug. If you're looking for a good shaker, this one gets the job done. <laughs> now, I should have actually lined my glass with ice, but I didn't, so I am going to pour without straining. Because that's the kind of drink it is. I know for a fact that this one's good. With this style of drink, you don't really need to shake as much. You would give it a vigorous stir if you just poured it <laughs> shake, over. Shake, 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 shake. Wait, I decided to, to Shana, though. <laughs> oh, yes, we are. That's true. We're and I decided to top this with Woodchuck Pear Cider because it was at the store and it looked good. And I said, let's check that out. I love the Pear Cider, but I don't like that it's in the store because that means fall. And well, I am not ready for summer to be over, and everyone who keeps saying summer is over needs to please stop. Knock it <laughs> off, please. Because I'm not ready. You're concerning the lady over here. <laughs> it's still July. Well, it is, and, and then of course there was a Sharon is blooming, and I'm like, what is this, September? Uh, I know, I know. It's I saw a tree changing color the other day. Like, ah, no. I think everyone's confused this year. My peppers haven't even come in yet. Uh, <sighs> trying. Anyway. Anyway, so it's let's not actually. Fall yet. Let's get a straw in there and give it a bit of a stir. Gentle stir. Don't oh, stir the bubbles. Jilly likes our glass. It's from Kowloon, which Patrick might know. Do, are you familiar with Kowloon? I bet Patrick is familiar with Kowloon, as a matter of fact. It's a Kowloon glass in Saugus. Saugus. Saugus Mass. Saugus Mass. Up on Route 1. <laughs> so, let's try that out again. Hmm. Alan Wind, I love it. I, I need to try it again. Make sure it's still okay. I think that's better than your average hurricane because it's, it's less rock you on your ass mm -hmm. and it's got a nice balance. I like it. Good. So, yeah. he, he Patrick says hookers. Patrick says he went there after prom in 1985. Yes, of course, it's a, it's a good after prom. It's an after prom place to be. <laughs> For those of you who aren't familiar with Kowloon, it's this huge tiki slash nautical palace in Saugus, Massachusetts off of Route 1. This place is enormous. And it's got this sunken bar in part of it. It's got a Thai restaurant. It's got a sports bar. Like all of this within this one place. It's crazy. It's got this, the rigging for a ship. 
in yep. part of it. And then bands play cover songs like ABBA and everything next to this ship rigging. It's it's a great place. And I think it's apparently the third largest restaurant for seating in the United States. Yeah. Something like that. It's, a, it's really huge. And true story, the only time we ever go there now is because it's about 10 minutes from where Paul's entire family is buried. So <laughs> whenever we go to visit folks, it's it usually it's, it's it sounds really Calhoun. dire, but you know what? You're meeting friends, you're meeting family. You or know? whenever someone's buried. But so, you it, know, it always you, ends with a trip to Kowloon. You, you take care of the necessaries, and then you go, go to Kowloon. Yeah. That's a good thing. Uh, Patrick says, an awful Chinese restaurant. So August, oh, really? Oh, wow. I, uh, <laughs> they have so many menus. I beg to differ. I think their Thai menu is great. So oh, I don't, maybe you get bad food there. I, I usually just what drink. The, uh, the, the drinks vary very widely, but you know, yeah, I think it's a fun I, I place. Usually just drink I just, just, oh, sushi. I've had sushi there. Certainly. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. I don't know about the yeah, Chinese food. Yeah. I've usually had sushi or. Yeah, and that whole section of Route 1 used to be filled with a lot of themed places like the hilltop with the big cactus gone. Oh, there's a red roof in that's stumbling distance from Kowloon. And I remember one night we had a room there and we just um, kind of set ourselves up at the sunken bar and then stumbled back in the snow to our hotel room. Stagger distance is always a good idea. Yeah. Uh, Joby says, Saturday we missed you in New Orleans. Would have grabbed cocktails. How'd you like the city? New Orleans. Loved it. We're gonna tell you. I wish we could have done more in terms of actual New Orleans. I mean, we were there for the Tales of the Cocktail event, which was great. Um, but we, we, we still saw We did. We, we did manage to see a lot, yeah. and um, we happened to connect with a guy at a party whose office was in the same block we were staying in, so he gave us some really good recommendations for yeah. restaurants and such. So Very good food. Got to Latitude 29. Of um, course. Yes, the, the must-dos. Roosevelt Hotel for Sazerac. And, hey, you know, it, was, it was good. It's good. Great I, hotel. I Very classy. I plan to go back next year. Very classy. I really like the business district. You know, people are all oh, French Quarter. Hey, well, it's awesome. You know, it's also kind of noisy on a Saturday. Yikes! But <laughs> <laughs> that's the price you pay. We took yeah. the advice to avoid Bourbon Street. You know, after Most, we walked after it hours, once, yeah. and then yeah, it's good. And then we didn't need to do that again. But it's a good thing. But it was fun. But definitely, folks. <laughs> Oh, Patrick has only had their Chinese. Well, if you don't like their Chinese, try doing the menus. I think the Thai and the sushi are great. So that, that's a plug for Kowloon. I mainly remember the sushi, but you know, like like I mentioned, I usually have a few drinks with them at Kowloon. Well, but, that's kind of the point. Yeah. Part of the point, anyway. And you know, they, it really. I think is, it is the point. Well, if you want to go to Kowloon to watch the uh, the Patriots, yeah, you can do that. But it's not the entire bar. It's just one place you can go. You want to see comedy? That's upstairs. You know, so they serve. They were, we're all, and they are always hopping. And I think when you see a joint like that, that's kind of doing the tiki, that's doing the Chinese food and all that, and they're they're not really pushing business, you think, how long are they going to be around? Kellen's going to be there for a long time. I want to get in another plug. One more plug, please. The album that we're listening to, Shonda and the Howlers, Trouble, debut album of this fabulous band out of Las Vegas. And um, it's available on, I want to get it absolutely right, rumbarrecords.bandcamp.com. I highly, highly recommend it. And we have each made a cocktail inspired by the, the band and their album, but that's it. I feel like maybe we should make more cocktails. <laughs> we can take suggestions from the audience as that's always. True. You never know. This is only the second of the evening. What do you think of the album? I, I loved it, but... I, uh, you know, I, I personally, I've heard it a number of times by now, and I think that the lead singer is equally at home as a blues shouter and as a soul singer. Yes. And her band follows suit. It's really great, and that they can play just a regular Memphis soul riff. They can do some really gut bucket blues. Really talented folks. Gut bucket blues? Yeah. I've never heard that expression before. Please. I like that though. So, something brandy based. Joey says, uh, do we have brandy? We do have some. We do have brandy. We have plenty of brandy. Oh, we do? Here, oh my gosh. Yes, we've restocked. <laughs> so, luckily enough. We have some liquor coming um, from some companies I'm kind of excited about, but I will share with you, uh, yes. coming on Tuesday's episode, we will be mixing with Barrow's Intense Ginger Liqueur. We met these fabulous people at Tales of the Cocktail 
and acquired a bottle of their amazing, amazing liqueur. So um, Tuesday's episode features a cocktail with this. And next Friday, we're actually going to visit their facility. So we'll be uh, shooting some, some video there. I'm excited about that. They're in Brooklyn. There are a lot of these ginger liqueurs on the market these days. Uh -huh. And uh, we have mixed with some of them. I will say that this is a very fresh flavor, very punchy flavor. I really like that in a ginger liqueur. Like, you know, I don't want any mistake. It's like, yes, ginger forward. It's called Barrow's Intense Ginger. It is intense, it's but intense. I love it. And actually, when we met with Josh, he said, try it. We were having brunch. He said, try it in coffee. It is really good in coffee. As a matter of fact, <laughs> you know? it's not bad at all. It's great. So, anyway. So oh. we said something with brandy? Or your Singapore sling. Oh, Singapore Can sling. Can we do that? Yes. We have Benedictine. Oh, and I just bought gin yesterday. Okay, we can definitely do a Singapore sling. Yeah. Would you like to uh, prototype a brandy and I'll get on the sling? Okay. Okay. But who wants to go first? Do you want to go first or should I? Mm. That's a quote from Lost in America. Yeah, it's so true. Maybe Lost in America. We, uh, you went first last time, but I need to figure out what's in the sling again, so maybe I'll... Okay, I'll go first. Bugger off and figure oh. that out. <laughs> you don't need to bugger off. Don't bugger off, Paul. It's okay. You can stay. Um, I need to find a cocktail shaker. Pardon me while I drop out of the shot. Ta-da! <laughs> oh, boy. They're all stacked up together. This is a really great album, isn't it? I wish I'd thought to ask how to pronounce her name before we went live, but that's life, isn't it? Okay. All right, brandy. Brandy. Let's see, I'm going to start with two ounces of brandy because I usually start with two ounces. And... <gasps> I'm going to use the Barrow's Intense Ginger uh -huh. because we were just talking about it and I love it. So anyway, Barrow's Intense Ginger Liqueur. I'm going to use half ounce of that. Okay, here we go. Awesome. We got one of those bottles. What do you call these openers? It's like a, uh, it's like a, uh, a lager. Bottles. Yeah, it's like like the Grolsch bottles. Do they still make that? Anyway, all right. So I used a half ounce of the Barrow's Intense Ginger Liqueur, and I'm going to use a half ounce of fresh lime juice. And what else? What else? Can you go grab me some juice, please? for pineapple juice. Let's add some bitters to this. Hmm. Mm. I think, I know. Is the dash fire over there? Yes. We just bought this at Tales of the Cocktail. Isn't it pretty? Dash fire Malay bitters. And their bitters, their bottles are gorgeous. And the bitters are good too. I'm not, I don't mean to say that the bottles are prettier than the actual bitters are, but we use a few dashes of that. So anyway, I did. I want to make sure I'm not missing any comments. Oh, Doug says he has a bottle of Canton that he barely uses. I, I do like Canton a lot. Um, I was using it a lot, but now that I got the Barrows, I won't be going back. Um, let's see. Oh. Oh. Thank you. Anyway, um... Never, oh, Alice says she's never heard of ginger liqueur. I love ginger liqueur because I love ginger. So if you like the flavor of ginger, you'll really like this. So I did two ounces of brandy, a half ounce of Barrow's Intense Ginger Liqueur. And it is it is different from the other gingers in that it is intense. And it's straight up ginger. Like the Canton is basically ginger brandy. This is ginger liqueur. Um, and then I did several dashes of the Dash Fire Mole bitters, and I'm going to do pineapple juice. Oh, yes. <laughs> that he forgot to bring me. <laughs> so we'll just sit here and wait for him and drink. So, what has everyone been doing this weekend? Just 
some lime juice. Um, How much you need? Oh, Ellen's curious what the lime juice does to the cocktails. It adds some tartness, which I love. Um, I'll take a half ounce. And, you know, I'll just measure it in here. Thank you. Um, it adds a, a tart note. You know, uh, like you use it in sours, like whiskey sour, you know, any kind of sour, but also in margarita. It keeps it from being too sweet, which I am not a fan of super sweet drinks, quite honestly. So, it, if you've got a drink that's too sweet, add some lime. It'll take care Cocktail. of it. And I think this, this is my ice. This tends to be the problem drink. with a lot of those tall drinks and beach bars is that it's like liqueur, it's liqueur, liqueur, much. liqueur, it's and it's just sweet, 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 yeah. sweet, 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 booze. And it's just like booze with accelerant added, and it's a little like, mm, <laughs> you know. And you, you want to temper that a bit, and the lime will do that. Lime will do that too. Some drinks actually add vinegar. Really, how about that? Oh yeah, shrubs. Shrubs have vinegar. Yeah, the vinegar we, preserves. we did a shrub last year. Yeah. By request. Pretty intense. And it was, we had to cut way back on the amount of vinegar because it was like, wow, that's really vinegary. Mm -hmm. So anyway, what I did was two ounces of brandy, half ounce Barrows Intense Ginger Liqueur, half ounce fresh lime juice, half ounce pineapple juice, and about three dashes of the Dash Fire Mole Bitters. And I'm going to strain this. This is being written down, by the way. Into a Velveteen Lounge Kitchen <laughs> Into a glass. what cocktail glass? A Velveteen Lounge Kitchen cocktail glass. No, no sock on this one, though. No, no marabou sleeve. Yeah. Now we need to name it, and since we're honoring the music of Shannon and the Hollows, let's give it a name based on. Ooh, that's really good. Let's give it a name. Let's name it after one of the songs. Stay a while. I'm gonna call this one Stay a While. I think so. I like it. All right. I think so. Stay a while. All right. Boss turn. Okay. You want me to if you would take over, please. Okay. I need to grab my guy. Here. Every time I pick this up, that. Remember what I'm doing. Oh, you're writing it down. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Let's put Glad somebody it down. is. Could you send it to us afterwards? <laughs> yeah, really. Send me an email. By the way, you just named this after the song that is playing. And the one I made before was playing while I made it. So there you we go. We planned that. Anyway. All right, so Singapore, Singapore. Uh, there are a lot of variations on this one because it was supposedly, air quotes, invented around 1915 or so in Singapore. The what Raffles kind of Hotel Singapore? claims it, but they don't have the original formula. Oh, they came up with something years later. Singkat's making a puppet. Yay! Hey, all right. Aww. Well, that's, that's a specialty. If you haven't seen the man show, check it out. Yes. A lot of fun. So many fabulous shows to check out. Ellen's Homemade Delights. Sing Cat. Um, search for his channel X I N G C A T. Mm -hmm. He makes puppet. His he does free ingredient recipes. Um, Easy. His puppets like they have messages for you. It's it highly recommended. And Larissa's Kitchen. Fabulous food. You will be drooling by the end of her episodes and Ellen. So anyway. I'm recommending these channels that will make you hungry, but you'll be hungry in the best possible way. So. Uh, 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 you're welcome. <laughs> anyway. They are. These are fabulous channels. They they deserve all the success. Okay, no, I don't think we have a cherry liqueur down there, do we? Did we run out of the oh, yeah, I think we did. yeah, okay. Okay. So we're actually going to we're gonna do be a little improv here. You have to sub <laughs> sometime, and that's how it goes, folks. I'm like, how could we possibly not have something? We have everything. So we're out of this, cherry liqueur. This is actually how we would probably make this, so we'll actually go with this. Okay. So this is a, this is coming from a Beach Bum Berry Remix, because this is what I took my cues off of. There's a lot of formulas that'll give you a single course length. Some of them are really simple, like gin, cherry, lime, boom, done. That's actually a pretty fair beach drink at one of those places, and it's lacking some important ingredients. Let's actually illuminate it. We're going to start here. With an ounce of lime. This is a great song. 
That's what I was talking about with, when I was describing Gut Bucket Blues. So again, we are listening to the music of Shonda Hours from rumbarrecords.bandcamp.com. Highly recommended pickup. So this is calling for an ounce of a cherry liqueur. A lot of places will use herring. How about that? I just I'm so excited! <laughs> A lot of places will use herring, and uh, herring is actually very heavy, and I prefer actually to use maraschino myself. But we are out of that too! So what are we going to do? Well, as a matter of fact, the young lady decided to make her own cocktail cherries. So this is steeping in the cherries, and I think it's, it's forming a very a nice cherry now. liqueur! We made cherry liqueur, and I didn't even think about it. So anyway. I'm looking at it, and... Oh, oh yeah, that tastes I, great. I love this as too. So, yeah, it's so great. We, we we managed to in inauspiciously make cherry liqueur and it's really very good. <laughs> I didn't good. think we had cherry liqueur in here. We had cherry yeah, liqueur. We had cherry liqueur. <laughs> and cherries, boozy cherries. Which all I did was just take some I went for organic, but I took some organic cherries and just put them in a mason jar and filled it with brandy. And here we've got cherry liqueur, and we've got boozy cherries to use for our drinks. So, if you're looking right. for a project, that's an easy one. Two ounces of gin. This is one of those gin tropicals from way back when, when gin was a very common thing to have by the bar. This is before, from the Raffles Hotel. Before Rum took over, I haven't loved gin tropicals. There's some really but, great but gin But the tropicals. Singapore Sling has a history. It does. I was describing that before. Raffles has no idea what's in it anymore. And if you go to Raffles today, they will give you something that they say is the Jen Hoon Sling Horse Sling. They came up with that in the 70s, I think. And is, is it good? Yeah, I'm sure it's fine. There have been a lot of attempts to try to find out what's in the real thing. Hmm, well, we also need... Uh, what else goes in this thing? We need someone to... I'm just saying... We have half ounce of brandy. We need someone to sponsor a trip for us, too. Singapore and Tokyo, so we can get a Tokyo oh, Trader fix and go to the Raffles Hotel. And I'm just saying. Singapore is a classic trading town, and of course, it's <laughs> uh, my my company has a major office there, so I, I'd be glad to stop we're, uh, we're by. We're good and say booze hi. travelers. I also think it's a pretty good drinking town, but it's a, it's a business town. What do you expect? Now, here's the secret ingredient that a lot of recipes might actually issue, but you need not do that. Trying to get out of his way. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh -oh. That was graceful. <laughs> it wasn't the lime juice, was it? No, as a matter of fact, it was a bottle that could survive. So, <laughs> the label is totally off of this stuff, but it is in fact Benedictine. Well, it's a classic Singapore slang ingredient. Yes, it is. A lot of the simplified recipes will why eliminate the, it. Why this, does the label fall off? It's a little hot we back there. We haven't had it that long. No. Maybe they need to. This takes half an hour. I think they're blue. Yeah, maybe they do. Which, which company is that? It's, it's one of the big. It's one of the big companies. That's Bean Bee Liqueur. Uh, I don't see a major importer besides thought, Benedictine Liqueur Company. I thought it was one of the major. One of the big three. In, in any case, they need to rethink their blue. Also graceful. Sorry, folks. Social I wasn't prepared. <laughs> I, think, I, think, I think he survived. Okay, now I need one more ingredient, which I have to go get because I forgot about it. <laughs> well, to be fair, we, we are improvising this one. Bro. Doug, okay. Back in the 1980s, oh, 1980s? Navy sailors would take cherries in Everclear to sea, and it was classified as preserves. So the loophole in the... I like that. I like that. Um, Everclear. We were just discussing Everclear this morning. We were looking at... When we were in New Orleans, that we on Bourbon Street, you kept seeing ads for a drink called the Hand Grenade. Anybody familiar? We did not stop and have a hand grenade because since we were attending Tales of the Cocktail, there was a tremendous amount of booze and the hand grenade sounded kind of scary. So anyway, we, we the stayed name might be but we indicator. were curious, so we looked this up today. And apparently hand grenade is a jealously guarded copyrighted drink, registered trademark. 
But anyway, oh, why am I saying this? Oh, because of the Everclear. <laughs> I was looking Everclear. at the recipe, the, the probable recipe someone has made a, um, what they think is in it. And it was a shot of gin, a shot of grain alcohol, a shot of vodka, and a shot of... There were like four liquors in this. Melon liqueur, too. And a shot of melon liqueur. But there were four liquors and a shot of melon liqueur. I'm like, you would die. And then if you bought the yard glass that it comes in, you could get discounted refills at other bars. I'm like, no wonder. We, we were seeing passed out people on Bourbon Street that the cops were trying to arrest. I mean, that's why. Good luck. So anyway... Had a hand grenade, got the refill. But if you're one of the restaurants that serves the hand grenade and you'd like to host us, we'll come. Because <laughs> hey. we're, we're like that. Anyway. Proprietary ingredients, but at the end of the day, it's just a socket to your drink. Yeah. So, what we have here again. Hand grenade, jet fuel, and sadness. It looks <laughs> like jet fuel and sadness. <coughs> we were seeing Seriously. literally unconscious people that the police were just taking oh, away on Bourbon well, Street. Well, that's Bourbon Street, folks. Yeah. But, you know, open, yeah. open containers. Walking on down the street like that. I did appreciate that if we were got a sample in a hotel, I could just walk out with it and go to the other hotel and you know, whatnot. Glorious. Got Everclear from the liquor store <laughs> to hold her bottles. It was flammable. Yeah, it is flammable. That's Everclear, Everclear is best for flaming bananas foster and for I think just in your volcano bowl, the yeah. little well in the Reservoir center. takes Everclear. Yeah. We put Everclear in that. But I have to say, the guys I went to high school with, and if, if any of you are watching, hi! But um, the guys I went to high school with would go to Mexico and buy Everclear because we were like 90 minutes from Mexico, so... And you couldn't buy it in Orange County? Well, not when you were 17, but... Oh! Um, so they would yeah, go to Mexico true. and buy Everclear and bring it back and mix garbage pail punch and... Oh boy. You know, I need that ice again. I'm sorry, folks. A lot of things we need to do here. <laughs> To make this break work. We need a bigger bar. Apparently so. <laughs> okay, you're reaching for ice. The sling goes in one of these chimney glasses. We got a very stylish looking chimney glass here. From Sourpuss, but I don't they're not on their website. I went to their website the yeah. other day. Not, there. So we'll get some ice in there. Fill, fill the glass with crush. I filled that with ice. Well, mixology on the fly takes a lot of things among the mice. A lot of ice. Oh, anyway. And look like I'm favoring one cocktail over the other. I'm really not. Interesting, but true. It just, it's to my right. Oh boy, one more song, then we gotta start this over again. Well, that's a shame. No, but Not it's, that much of a shame. It's a great record. It is a great okay. record. So we got our sling here. Now, once again, because these things take time, etc. Where's my book? Oh. So this actually... <laughs> we need a bigger bar. Uh, he has to keep ducking out of the shot. Like, place to put things. Okay, this is an ounce of fresh lime juice, an ounce of a cherry liqueur. Uh, you could use hearing if you got it. Uh, if you had maraschino, I think that's an excellent addition. It adds a bit of a tang that I like a lot. I use the stuff we made ourselves by soaking cherries. Wait, is that what's making it so red? Yep. I'm so excited. You got cherry liqueur? My, my brandy soaked cherries are really, really good. Looking really good. Okay. Half ounce of Benedictine, critical ingredient that really makes it. Yes. Half ounce of brandy. We use uh, E and J, but like any good brandy yes, will we do. Got it. And two ounces of gin, and that is your base. And we are going to do this. Couple, you're making drinks tonight that mix your liquor. Yeah. Cool. I like mixing the liquor. <laughs> observation. Now I'm shaking and straining despite the fact that you could really shake and pour. Well, this one is full of ice. You don't need more ice on top of ice. I think pouring into that glass might be a little challenging. Oh yeah? Well, if you, but you're straining. Yes, I'm straining. It's pretty. So, and there is your drink. I want to actually drink down some of this because I need a little room. <laughs> That's actually the not bad sacrifice. at all, but what you need to do is temper it a little bit because it's a little sharp. Teleprompter with the chat and recipes. I will be placing the recipes below. Take a I'm look at here, the completed video. So, um, We're going to add about an ounce and a half, maybe two ounces worth of seltzer. 
I find that that is an excellent addition to a lot of drinks, particularly these hurricane style this drinks. Is a straight up drink. Sometimes you get a Mai Tai and it's really tart, very, very I tart. That's what I meant. You just toss in a little bit of seltzer, it takes care of that right there. Let's find a straw. Too. <laughs> so many swizzles, so, so little time. Little time folks. What the heck? What about a shout out to our pals? Will this work actually? No, yeah, it's too short. Sorry. Sorry, gonna sing. Hmm. Oh, no, these are tall swizzles. Apparently so. Well, will this do? I can do no, these. No, that's not gonna do. <laughs> They're all gonna sink. The struggle is real. Straw. <laughs> what about what about that fish one? That'll work. I think that'll work. Good. All right, so give it a stir. <laughs> when you're Swiss. Oh, that worked. And you have a sling. Oh, bar your hurricane straw. That's great. Yeah, that's a uh, sling. You got a compliment on your shirt. Oh, thank you. That's a nice shirt. Appreciate it. it. I seldom wear this. I have so many. Yeah, just, what can I tell you? Tastes like a Singapore sling, and it's really good. Thank you, Miko. And I have to say that I'm, I'm a little bit proud of my um, cherry liqueur. It's actually really good. Which was... Soak I, your fruit. I wasn't trying to make cherry liqueur at all. I just was trying to make boozy cherries for drink garnishes. And, we have the cherries, and I tell you, you put that in Manhattan, ah, oh, molto, molto. Yummy. Really nice little thing. Yummy. All right, so, I'm having a good time. Kind of, kind of, <laughs> I don't want to stop. I don't want to stop. This could go on for a while, folks, but boy, we'd be in a bit of a trouble. <laughs> <laughs> the wife is making a double batch of your brandy drink. Oh, nice. Okay, great. I Boy, give you, give you a formula online, you went right with it. I love that. That's, awesome. That's great. That's awesome. Things we improved. Which one is this? This is the. That's the first one I made. Oh yeah. She don't want a man. She don't want a man. The recipe will be below later. Mm. I hope and that, this uh, one will stay a while. Brandy turn. Which one? That one had brandy, Barrow's intense ginger liqueur, dash fire mole bitters. Lime juice and pineapple juice. It's good, it's good. Oh, wow. I know, right? You can do a lot of variations on that, but boy, that's, that's just fantastic straight up. Yeah, no problem. Oh, and jo Joey says loving it. Awesome. Thank you. Yay. It's awesome. That's a, uh, that's four good drinks, as a matter of fact, in about 40 minutes. Hello. Well. That's the end of the CD. Hmm. No. I don't want to go. What are you going to do? Start it over. We could, sit, we could continue to drink beer. I happen to have a full one right here. <laughs> you got to go get one for me. <sighs> Click with a little spice says hello. Hi. Hello. Good to see you. So anyway. I, I really do want him to start the CD again, but it is um, Shana and the Howlers, Trouble, their debut CD. They are a fabulous band out of Las Vegas. And to buy it, you would go to rumbarrecords.bandcamp.com. Highly, highly, highly recommend. Wait a minute, that didn't actually start where I wanted to. <laughs> oh, he's trying to start it over, but it's being eccentric. Mm. I'm not surprised. No surprise whatsoever. That's what happens when you're trying to play your CDs in a $20 DVD player. Yay! <laughs> I got comments. Oh, beer just... Beer cozy is a big thing in New Orleans. I am not surprised. You know, I have to say that... Oh. Do we do a ginger liqueur video? We are doing one Tuesday, and on Friday, As a matter of fact, we are visiting Barrow's Intense Ginger Liqueur, their facility. So I'm super excited about that. Yep. And, um, so we're saying, um, beer koozie is a big thing in New Orleans. I can see that, but I have to say that, yep. um, 
I am a fan of being able to take your drink and walk with it. Not in a like get drunk kind of way, but you know, sometimes you just want to take your drink and leave. You're, you're done? You want to mosey on? Hey. You might want to go for a walk after dinner. and I, I find that to be a very civilized custom. Now, I realize most people are not civilized about it, but... Well, that's what the police are for. And the fact is, we were... <laughs> at Tales of the Cocktail, we were just getting handed a lot of samples constantly. And you have two hotels, you want to shuttle I back I remember walking between, between the hotels, I was like loaded down with samples. <laughs> it was fun. It was Part really of the fun. fun. Part of the fun. Highly recommend Tales of the Cocktail. Good times. Are we gonna mix anything else? Well, Are we gonna I, drink beer? I don't know. What does the audience want us to do? Oh, go away. <laughs> <laughs> we're sick of people. <laughs> what? No. That's why we're here. I could. This one's almost gone. <laughs> we, we could certainly do more things if we have requests. We can do things on the fly. All things can happen. We have some fantastic ingredients in back of us. Absolutely. But I probably need to get more ice. That's true. So why don't I do that? That's a good first thing to do. Ah, a gin cocktail. Can do. Now, bear in mind, I just gave you a gin cocktail, so this is a second gin cocktail. <laughs> a second gin cocktail. I can get to work on that. Can you take some of these... Things away? Away. Is this done for? These are all done. Okay. That. I suppose at some point we should have dinner. Yeah. Vodka. We do have vodka. We usually don't mix with vodka just because it's so neutral. But that's kind of good in a way. I have an idea for vodka actually. Do you want to mix a gin cocktail? Oh. What? Are you curious to mix a gin cocktail? I like gin cocktail. Because I am thinking about a vodka cocktail, and Julie has requested a vodka cocktail. Uh, you made the brandy one. Okay, fabulous. All right, so I'm gonna duck out of the shot again and hope that there's another shaker glass down here. The shaker glass right here. I was gonna say, oh good, because there's not. So he's bringing me one. So if you make a gin cocktail, I'm gonna make a vodka cocktail because I had an idea. Those aside. I gotta get the vodka, so I'm just gonna. Vodka. Oh wow, we're really low on vodka. Oh wow, I didn't realize that. That's okay, you yeah, know, whatever. Okay, so I did two ounces of vodka. I hope this ends up on the comments below. There's a lot of stuff to remember. Okay. And there's no place to put anything behind our bar. But I did two ounces of vodka and I'm going to do some Barrow's Intense Ginger because they were kind enough to invite us to visit them next Friday. So I'm very excited to use their product. So I am going to do a full ounce of barrows. So I've done two ounces of vodka and an ounce of barrows intense ginger liqueur. And I'm going to do. We need more lime. We need more lime. I know, but I can't do that. What? Paul is going to go juice more limes because even though we have bottled lime juice, I just can't do it. Not here in front of you. If I was having a drink by myself, I might be able to do it, but I can't do it for you. And I can't do it to Barrows. So. This bottle that fell off our shelf is just on the floor behind me, so I'm gonna duck down and get it. This is the one that fell earlier. Blue Letter 21. 
We love them. We did an episode at Bootlegger 21. Well, at Prohibition Distillery, who makes Bootlegger 21. And, oh, I'm sorry you fell. All better. Waiting for my lime juice. How's that lime coming? <laughs> He's juicing as fast as he can. Wasn't that a... Lifetime movie, I'm juicing as fast as I can. Are you really juicing as fast as you can? Yes. <laughs> so anyway, so far I've got two ounces of vodka and one full ounce of Barrow's Intense Ginger Liqueur. And I'm going to do about three quarters of an ounce of the lime juice, which is a lot of lime, but I have my reason. And hmm, I'm thinking orange bitters. So the Fee Brothers were the closest. I did four dashes because I, I definitely want them to show up. So let's see what we think. Oh, look, he washed a glass for me too. He's so good that way. It's like Mel's Diner in there. <laughs> you have no idea how happy you made me with that comment. I love Alice and my friend Zach and I love Alice so much. Anyway, like Mel's Diner. I just want to do an episode of Mel's Diner. Anyway. We really probably should have some food soon. Um, <laughs> but I just can't, I can't stop mixing drinks live. So anyway, I did two ounces of vodka, an ounce of Barrow's Intense Ginger Liqueur, and three quarters of an ounce of fresh lime juice, and several large dashes of orange bitters, in this case, Fee Brothers. Um, other orange bitters would be just fine. Oh my gosh, you gotta try this. Oh, this is good. Do you like ginger? This is the one. This is something like, I, I don't often use vodka because it's so neutral that it doesn't have flavor really, but if you want to really highlight the flavors of something else, it's a good one to use. And in this one, I want well. to highlight the ginger, so I like it. <laughs> Pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. <laughs> so anyway, this was two ounces of vodka, one ounce of Barrow's Intense Ginger Liqueur, three quarters of an ounce fresh lime juice, and several dashes of orange bitters. Doing. Proceed. Please. Are you mixing? Yes, I'm mixing. Oh, I okay. thought we were done, but Paul's mixing and turning. So, go you. And request. Mm oh, thank you. I, I love my fabric. Oh, thank, I got this one at Joanne Fabrics, actually. Um, which is actually where I get a lot of my fabrics. Um, I try to jump on them when I see them because then they disappear, but yeah, this one's joint yeah. fabrics. Um, but thank you, I appreciate that. Another vodka cocktail, yay! I know, like, a lot of liquor people issue vodka because it's a, um, has less character than a lot of other liquors, but it's an opportunity for other flavors to take over, so. It's very mixable. It's very mixable. And the fact is, it is one step removed from gin, which I'm about to mix with. So there. Oh. oh. We had a request for a gin Promised cocktail. gin cocktail. As a matter of fact, uh, somebody was asking about that. At the very moment, I was thinking about... Uh, Zincat says, we practically live at Joanne's these days. I believe it. Oh, jeez. I see your puppets. I believe yeah, cer it. Yes, certainly, sir. <laughs> Absolutely. The faux fur aisle, to be specific. <laughs> so back in the 20s, when a lot of these cocktails were being devised, one of the prominent liquors around was gin. Now, gin, of course, is easily made. Which, which gin are you using? 
As a matter of fact, I'm using Blue Lager 21. Prohibition Distillery. Hello. Let's go to New York. That's the stuff. Good stuff. As a matter of fact, we found out, I took a look recently and said, wow, this got a kick. 94 proof. We. Yeah, no wonder it has a kick. Hello. So, <laughs> one of the classics that was devised back in the day, I'm not sure by who, is in fact the. Not the Hawaiian room, what am I thinking of? The Royal Hawaiian. <laughs> Well, Hawaiian. Well, I'm the one mixing, I should know, right? That's from a, a restaurant in New York. Uh, the Hawaiian Room. Hawaiian Room is. is That's why you were Hawaiian thinking room. room. Yes. The Hawaiian Room in New York. Now, I don't know where I actually did the Royal Hawaiian, but it's a really <laughs> easy drink and it's good. You probably think Peter and I are furries. <laughs> I, you know what? Paul and I can't go out in our town without people looking at us like we stepped off the mothership. And, Usually I'm dressed what I consider passing for normal. And I, I just think we look so straight up normal and people look at us like we just stepped off the mothership. So I get it. It's not exactly like we're putting on a P-Funk concert here, you know? Well, just sometimes when people give us these looks like, oh my God, who are those people? I think like, you should see me when I'm really freaky. Let's check that out. Yeah. So, two ounces of the gin. <laughs> this is a pretty easy drink. One ounce of pineapple juice. Oh, love the malty. Oh, good. I'm glad you. I'm glad you're loving the malty. It's really great for summer, Malfi's which a apparently fantastic is mixer. Over. Half ounce of orgeat. The orgeat is nothing more than a, an almond syrup. The orgeat made it cloudy. How about that? Interestingly enough. I just mix it up myself. Now, some people will argue about how you have to make the orgeat, etc., etc. <laughs> Doug says not wearing a sweatshirt and yoga pants. No. Who? I don't think I own Doug. No. I don't think I own a sweatshirt, and I don't wear my yoga pants outside of my house. So there. It's just me. Pardon me. Got to get ice I, again. I don't judge, but well, maybe I secretly judge, but I don't say anything. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we need a bigger bar. <laughs> You're telling me. I got a goose to scale every time I walk past her. So. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Terrible. So that's it. Although I actually decided with this formula, you could definitely add bitters. What I want to like to add orange bitters. Do we have those right here? They're right there. Yeah. I just used them. For your brothers, excellent orange bitters. Yes. If you can't find them, you can probably find Angostura, excellent orange bitters. Oh, Ellen signing off. Thank you for joining us, Ellen. It was so fabulous to Thank see you. Thank you. Well, this is the final of the evening because. Thank you for joining us. So. Because we really need you to eat after this. Not a bad idea. Strain. That's those small strainers. Uh, Julie says, I don't hurt PJs to the store. And those of us at the store, thank you. Please. Anymore. <laughs> so that's the Royal Hawaiian. There's not much to it, but I think it's a real classic. <laughs> I think you're going to need a bigger bar. We are going to need a bigger bar. But you know what, we have, um, just speaking of going to eat a bigger bar, hidden in our Shonda and the Howlers cozy is Darragansett! Mm. New Englanders will understand that. I think Doug, if he's still watching, will actually recognize this can. He said that. It's the, um, yes, the, the vintage, vintage can. Quint can. The Quint can. Josh, I think Shark Week's over, or about to be over, but... We just did a Shark Week episode. We did. In respect of. And if you actually find Jaws to be among your favorite movies, hey. I actually really enjoy Jaws. Now. I enjoyed it. Well, I didn't see it at the time. My parents wouldn't take me because we were about to move on to a boat. No. And they didn't want me to be afraid of the water, which I get. Sounds wise. But when I did finally see Jaws, I <laughs> 
I quite enjoyed it, but I'm also the person who loves a shipwreck. Let's try this. 1975, absolutely. Can you say the recipe again? Okay, so that was, this is, rather, the Royal Hawaiian. Now, this is pretty simple, not too much to it. Two ounces of gin, half ounce of lime juice, one ounce of pineapple. That's it. Shake, strain, there you go. That's strong. I added orange bitters. You can omit them if you don't have them. I think it enhances the cocktail. It's good. Yep. It's good, but this is one, you want to have one. It's kind of like martini strain. Well, it's got two ounces of hooch in it. It's good. It's really Nobody good. No big surprise there. Essentially, it's the, idea, it's the same proportions as the martini, but it's got some sweet stuff in it. Mm -hmm. So. Oh, watching Jaws, it gets me every time. Robert, Robert Shaw drunk through the entire thing. Well, yeah. <laughs> Quint! Uh, us his character. And he pays for it too. Great, let's, ra let's raise a gansa to Quint. Oh man, I love Jaws. Jaws rocks. I was, I was watching um, before, well, I did share a picture on our um, Facebook yesterday when I'm doing my makeup because without makeup, I look like Casper the Friendly Ghost. So when I was doing my makeup for shooting yesterday, I was watching The Killer Shrews and I like to watch a movie when I'm doing my makeup because, you know, hey. it is what it is. But today I watched Horror Party Beach which is the beach party movie set in Connecticut. Stanford, baby. It's Connecticut. You just don't think of Connecticut when you think of beach party movies. You think of <laughs> And he everyone rest anyway. died in that one, so. Yeah. New England. Gotta raise a glass. Gotta raise a glass. All right, it's probably about time for us to. All right, uh, we, gotta, we gotta eat. Sound that sucker off. Folks, it's been fantastic to see you. Yes, Any and I want to uh, get in another plug, though. Oh, yes. Shonda and the Howlers. Let me make that closer. Rumbarrecords.bandcamp.com. Highly, highly, highly recommend. You're listening to it. If you don't know what it is, just open your ears and you'll say, oh, yeah, that's it, that's it. That's it. Highly Check recommend. It out. Such a good Stop. album. It remains a good album. Still. It remains a fantastic album, actually. Oh. So, um, pick it up, and um, we will see you on Tuesday with Ladies' Night on Gilligan's Island. Uh, I'm kind of excited about this one. We will be featuring fun. Barrow's Intense Ginger Liqueur in our drink. And an appetizer so easy that Lovey could make it on her Coke's Night Off. <laughs> Ladies Night on Gilligan's Island. And then Thursday for happy hour. I don't know yet. Oh, wait, no, wait, we shot it. Oh, I know. National Watermelon Day. August uh, 3rd is National Watermelon uh, Day. And we have a delicious gin drink for National Watermelon Day. So. Speaking of gin drinks. Speaking of gin drinks. So, okay. So anyway, have a great week. And we will see you on Tuesday and Thursday and next week for something live. If you have a band or anything that you would like us to promote, let us know. All we need is the music and the rights to use it. And we will share for sure. And we'll give you a few cocktails. We do. We have a book that we need to share soon. Um, a friend gave us a fabulous book that we will be sharing soon. And, um, you know, we love to promote our friends. So, anyway, have a great week. We'll see you later. Bye. See ya soon.